I'm honored next to present our next mayor. This is the Honorable Rex Paris, mayor of Lancaster, has set a net zero power by 2020 goal for the city of Lancaster, California. It aims to become one of the world's first net zero cities for electricity in use by 2020. In July of 2012, Lancaster was named the solar energy capital of California, and California is the solar energy capital of the country, almost. I mean, I realize there's New Jersey in there too, and some others, but still, very, quite, quite an accomplishment. With 132 watts of solar energy production capacity per capita. I present to you the Honorable Rex Paris. <laughs> Mayor Paris. Thank you. No, I'm going to be up here. Thank you. I'm actually a trial lawyer, and it's very hard for me not to be on the same floor with you. I, I just don't know how to speak any other way. So if you'll bear with me. I want you, go ahead. I don't, could you imagine that? I'm going to be the first net zero city in the world, and I didn't bring a clicker. I mean, <laughs> I want you to imagine that all we wake up tomorrow, 97% of every peer-reviewed journal tells us there's an asteroid coming. It might be 50 years out, it might be 100 years out, but it's coming. And 93% of every reputable astrophysicist tells us the same thing. It's coming and it's aimed right at us. Because that's what they're telling us, isn't it? Once I became convinced of that, whether or not I was a Republican, a Democrat, a Libertarian, or a member of the Pig Party, did not matter. It's science. It is not a political issue. It should never be in the political domain. You're going to stop clapping because it's you I'm upset with. Every time somebody gets up there and puts it in the political domain by putting Democrat or Republican next to it, we are losing half the country. We lose half the country. A year ago, I had my daughter, one of my daughters, had twins. And I became a grandfather. And it means something much more significant to me now when they talk about the world we are leaving for our grandchildren. And it terrifies me because everybody in this room knows something horrible is coming. We don't know how horrible, but it will be horrible. And we lose the urgency of it. And we act like it's a business. It is not. We have a certain amount of time to affect the course of that asteroid, and then it will be too late. We will not be able to stop it. And unfortunately, we will probably not experience the worst of it. Because if we did, we would be much more serious about this. Let's go to the next one. Fortunately, when I decided we would be the solar capital of the world, I lived in the perfect storm. This is the energy that can be produced by the sun in the US. The darkest spot on that map is Lancaster. So of course we should be the solar capital of the world. It's because of our elevation, our longitude, our latitude. The wind uh, keeps the, you know, is just right. It's not too dusty, so it doesn't cover the panels. But at the same time, it keeps the air quality good. And so when I decided that we would be the solar capital of the world, one of the things I realized we had to do is we had to search the world and find out what everyone else was doing. And because I am a trial lawyer, I was able to do that. I could afford it. 
Nobody was going to complain because I, I pay, pay my own expenses. And we went to energy conferences all over the world. And interestingly enough, the world knows something horrible's coming. It's like everybody knows something horrible's coming. But what I realized is that we're trying to fix it from top down. It can't be fixed from top down. It doesn't seem to be responsive top down. But it is very easy to fix this from the bottom up. And that's what I want to talk to you about. The first project we did was Bill Gross, right? Yeah. Bill Gross comes to us. He's the guy who, he's one of those dot-com guys who made all that money. And he had this plan. Those are mirrors. And, you know, a year and a half ago, mirrors made a lot of sense. You could produce electricity for 14 cents a kilowatt, right? That was competitive during peak time. Guess what? We've got this beautiful five megawatt plant that is now, it's old science. It doesn't work. And the reason I bring that up is because what we have to be prepared for is this is moving exponentially fast. There will be changes like that. Moore's law seems to be in play with solar, with solar panels. The projections are we could have solar panels this big power a house, maybe smaller. I mean, who expected our computers to be in watches? But right now, in a very short period of time, watts per capita, that's Lancaster, that's San Jose, that's San Diego. A lot of it is because of just the confluence of, of coincidences that occurred that enabled us to get there faster. But I think the real reason is is because we intend to be net zero before anyone else. And that competitiveness is, has kind of captured the city. And the urgency has captured the city. You know, one thing us Republicans are very good at is public safety. We don't screw around with public safety. What is this but a public safety issue? Why aren't we framing it that way? You know, and, and when I teach trial lawyers, I tell them, if you're going to try a case in Russia, you better learn how to speak Russian, right? We really do have to segment the people we're talking to and put it into a frame that they will relate to and will be motivated by it. You know, the, the, you have that New York Times article. She was excited about me being a Republican. And I, I really found that odd. I really did. Because I really believe this is a public safety issue. I believe in the asteroid. It's coming. Another thing we did is, and it's an invitation to all of you, you have a renewable energy source or idea or a startup, and it makes sense to us, come to Lancaster. You will have my cell phone number. When city staff tells you that you will have a permit on a certain day, you will have it on that day, or you call me. The staff in that city is now a staff that looks for reasons to say yes. Most city staffs, the default is to say no. If you started electing local officials who had a default of yes, could you imagine how quickly this would change? I mean, it is really, insane when it's, in, it's economically viable. It's technologically possible. Every house should have solar on it, shouldn't it? I mean, is there a reason not to? Imagine, imagine if I decided instead of doing that, I'm going to pass an ordinance and your house is now going to cost 30% more in electric power. And you're going to have to buy it from this company called Southern California Edison that none of us like. But that's who you've got to buy it from, right? How long would I stay in office? But isn't that exactly what every mayor is doing by doing nothing? By doing nothing, that's what you're doing. Once we got that attitude, we then decided, why don't we be partners with these companies? 
Why don't we, you know, join it? Why don't we really enjoy the excitement of it? I mean, I don't talk that way there, but that's really it. I mean, it's exciting stuff what you guys are doing. So we had a meeting. Go back. No, that wasn't a signal. <laughs> we, I'd been in China. I'd talked to BYD. They do uh, most of the battery storage. They make uh, the EverReady batteries. They make most of them. They're the largest battery company in the world. They're a big car company. Do a lot of solar. I was in Shenzhen. I met with them. And I saw how they were trying this net zero house. And, you know, it worked, but they weren't selling it. I mean, nobody was building them. And, you know, it is a different culture. The house was much smaller. I mean, we probably wouldn't rent it. You know, it, would, it wouldn't appeal to us. So I put them together with KB Homes, because they do a lot of building in Lancaster. But they're the largest home builder in America. Put the two companies together, said, produce a house. Makes more electricity than it uses. Can't be done. I said, OK, you try to do it. Just try to do it. See how close we can get it. I'll waive all building fees. Their big thing was, how long is it going to take to get permits? So I looked at my watch, and I said, how long do you want it to take? Solar in our community, and even wind, if you want to put a windmill in your house, is over the counter. You go over into the next city, it'll take two to three months. And you'll have to redo the plans two or three times. This isn't rocket science. I mean, we've been doing this a long time. We know what's required to put solar panels on a house. It should be over the counter. And then, as when we had the meeting, I'm calling them. I'm calling BYD in China. Where the hell's the panels? Right? Because they, weren't, they were holding it up. Later, I realized cities don't do that, I guess. <laughs> They said they wanted to be partners. I'm a partner, right? We got a timeline here. We're still doing a lot of work with BYD, and she, the vice president always tells the story about how, I didn't know mayors called you up and yelled at me to go faster. <laughs> anyway, three of those houses were built. It powers the electric car also. It's net zero, and those, even those roof tiles turn smog into benign gases. The roof tiles, amazing house. Ask yourself this, if you wanna have net zero buildings, who should you be talking to? The president, the governor, or the guy who says what goes on the permit? That's your mayors. We tell you what the rules are for building. But I guarantee you this, not one of you ever talked to me. Because you don't think of it. It's not in the frame. The combined intellect in this room, if they started focusing on elected officials, we could actually save this planet. We could save it. We don't have enough information to really know how much carbon this Earth can take. But we know we're getting close to filling it up, don't we? The people that are going to save it are going to be in the neighborhoods and in the cities and in the towns across the world. And those are the people we really have neglected. You know, the mayor in China is much more powerful than the mayor in America. You convince him of this, those houses will have solar on it in a week. After this, KB Homes then started putting solar as an add-on to all their houses. And this is the savings. This is one of their, their flyers they give out. Today, it's economically stupid not to have solar on your home if you're buying a new home. Who doesn't like it are the people who are buying homes to rent them out, the investors. A lot of that's going on now because of the 2008 crash. They, they don't like it because they, they don't pay the electricity bill. The tenant does. But if this, the, the person who's buying a home for their family, this makes absolute sense. But, you know, we've only been doing this a few years. We won the, the World Energy Globe Award last year. 
We beat out San Francisco for the Environmental Protection Agency's most sustainable city. And we don't have any money. You know, I mean, we're just a small little city in L.A. County. And, you know, we're like every other city in California. We have no money. It was just done because the people that are involved in their community decided that this really was important enough to take on. Look what's happening. I, my, my goal is that we create something that is portable and scalable. And that's why I'm so glad I was here, because I've been talking to a lot of folks here. We actually need to have a package. And if you're the mayor of you know, whatever city somewhere in America, here, there's three different plans that'll get you to net zero. But these are the ordinances you have to change. If I had had something like that, you know, we would have done it much faster. We re that's what we should be developing. You know, not very many, but a couple of my Republican friends accused me of being disloyal to the free market. You know, they really, they say that like it's magic. Magic's gonna save me. This thing called a free market, right? It, it's beyond me. And, and, his, and, his, and he came to the council and he spoke. He was supposed to be a friend of mine. And he said, and, he said, and it's all just for a title. It's not a title of being the solar capital. There is no place on this planet that is the center, the center. Uh, you know, Scott Page out of Michigan talks about the theory of complexity and how if you're gonna be in finance, you gotta be in New York or you gotta be in London. You gotta be in a center of it, right? You wanna be in computers, you probably ought to go to Palo Alto, you know? You're in the center of it. It's like being in this conference every day. You've got all these ideas. It's constantly coming at you. you. You develop better and better technologies. There needs to be some place that is the center for what we're doing, and it will go exponentially faster just because of the group process. And I would invite you to Lancaster. It may not be the prettiest place in the world, and it does get a little hot, but if you are an alternative energy, and want to save this planet, I will move whatever I have to move for you. I will do whatever I have to do to make your project successful the moment you convince us it makes sense. Because we need a place that is literally going to save the world. And nobody else is volunteering. I'm volunteering.